fact, uh, it is very imperative to be conscious in analyzing uh, the political development across Africa right now to uh, actually uh, mitigate uh, the uh, consequences uh, like uh, you and Dr. Edia uh, already mentioned. Uh, could task with uh, the uh, intention of seeing practical and positive change in uh, respective nations, uh, it's actually uh, necessary. Uh, of course, uh, the viewpoint shared by you all. Let's continue with uh, Mr. Ellis, uh, of course. He's a geopolitical strategist. And of course, when we talk about coup d'etat, we cannot just uh, keep it at the internal level. There is uh, the tendency to, to look at, at it from every dimension. And of course, uh, coming uh, to you, uh, Mr. Ellis, as a geopolitical strategist, can you uh, attest or what can you say about the, uh, the hike in the ge geopolitical uh, shift in Africa and the political revolution also witnessing itself in Africa and the end results being a coup d'etat. So what relation can we give to this and what is the way forward? Because I quite remember like the, the, the two other uh, panelists have underlined when there is uh, the, the civic engagement in political affairs and of course going to an extent of uh, embracing military uh, takeover, we can see on the streets of Gabon how the uh, the, the, the youthful population was actually jubilating uh, when the military overwhelmed the uh, incumbent, Ali Bongo. So now we want to analyze uh, this and, and see in your own perspective as a geopolitical analyst. What are those? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, okay. Thanks, Clarice. Yes. Uh, thank you for, um, to the, to the panelist for um, elucidating um, so eloquently in the current situation, at least at the very beginning. But I want to just connect my argument to Mr. Devil's argument in the sense that we do not know exactly what is happening right now. We, we, we see blood in the water and because of the frustration that is coming from the civilian population, um, their inability to benefit uh, from the resources of Africa, from you know, in terms of whether it's education or it is, um, you know, health care or it is, you know, the ability to, um, you know, improve socioeconomically. We are seeing that there is this frustration and this frustration is all over Africa. The question that I would like to ask really is who are the puppet masters? Who are the puppet masters? Because generally there are typically lots of um, deals being brokered behind the scenes. Um, that would have initiated um, a certain degree of confidence on the part of the military for them to actually be able to work and operate in such a, a coordinated fashion. Um, where there is smoke, there is fire. And um, looking at the geopolitical chessboard, you know, I would say that um, there are external powers that are vying for influence in Africa. We talk about, you know, these things are happening throughout um, the Francophone, so-called Francophone Africa, um, where the French have had significant influence in these places you know going back decades and so now we have other parties like the russians who are coming in the chinese are coming in the americans are looking to re-strategize their position so that they could actually um also not lose the influence that they have in britain and the european union so we have all these parties um that are with significant um power and are able to influence and shape you know what is happening behind the scenes but let us look, whenever their coup d'etats are very destabilizing to countries, you know, because you, you, you need to have civilian rule. And um, where there are coup d'etats, you know, you generally could have um, the risk of having another, uh, let's say, tyrant or someone that does not listen to the constitutional requests of the civilian population. Mm -hmm. Now. I want to say that um, let's break down the, the, the main parties inside of a country. You have the government, and there is typically the parliament, and then there is the executive. And the executive should be able to should, should change over political cycles. And of course, we know that in Africa, there are lots of, um, you would say, individuals that have been in power for a very long time, and they have been supported by external powers. 
So external powers that normally cry for democracy, they cry for democracy very conveniently if they do not have influence. But where they have influence, they typically are accepting the status quo. And wherever there are coup d'etats, they are a symptom of fundamental problems you know, that we need to look at. And of course, we mentioned about the, that the civilian population are unable to participate in the benefits of the development of Africa, especially now as we have the BRICS coming on, on the geopolitical chessboard, a, a significant piece, mm -hmm. where there are many, um, the Europeans are concerned about the BRICS, the Americans are concerned about the BRICS, and because they are, there is a transition from the Western powers into a new um, power structure that we're still waiting to see how it's going to actually look like. Um, now, I want to understand, does the militaries of these countries have any agenda pertaining to how they're going to transition back to civilian rule? This is something that I need to see on the table and that the people need to participate and to understand exactly what the agenda of the military leaders, what they do have right now. So we talked about the government make, being made up of the executive that should be there cyclically, then the parliament that should also be there cyclically, then the judiciary that should actually be there to support the constitution um, of, of the country, the military, which is generally controlled by the executive. Obviously, there seems to be some you know, disagreement between these parties. And of course, we don't understand what is the straw that has broken the camel's back because in many of these countries we've had leaders there for quite some time then there is the people now the people is not um you know is 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 made up of the, the elite or the bourgeoisie or the aristocracy and the ordinary people now the bourgeoisie the aristocracy they generally have lots of connections to the the countries who are the puppet masters and so, you know, we need to understand exactly what is happening. And, and for us to understand what is happening, we need to see more information coming out from the military to state exactly what is their agenda and how are they planning to actually restore civilian order? Because I do not support any military occupation of any description, because where their military occupies, the people have no power or say. We need to go back to civilian um, rule and the question is what is the agenda to actually restore democracy or restore civilian rule um, and we need to look at the constitution of the countries to see whether or not the constitutions as they are are able to satisfy you know to, to ensure that the people actually are in power because the people of Africa are, are not in power right and how can we essentially create constitutions reevaluate the governance structures of these African countries to ensure that the people have a say in what is happening because now they are cannon fodder. You know, the people are the ones that generally suffer as a consequence of the coup d'etat because they initially you have all the hope and the euphoria, you know, of, 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 of the revolution, but then in the end, it never really brings forth, you know, the, the, the actual benefit. So, so there's significant optimism right now because we're seeing leaders getting pushed to the side, rightfully, wrongfully, they need to go to the side. And now what happens next? And so we need to have a bit, little bit more information because we need to talk about the Sahel, as um, Dr. Eddie mentioned. The Sahel is a highly strategic, especially for, for um, you know, France. And so we now see lots of these countries are getting are frustrated with the military occupation of France, you know, because it's not just a case of military occupying, you know, you know geographical locations. They have influence in, in, in exactly what happens in these countries. Yeah in terms of governance, in terms of policy. And Afri and in these countries, there have been a dearth or a lack of sovereignty in terms of the ability of the population to express what they want, you know, and, and the government failing to, 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 to deliver these things. So I want to leave it there for the time being.